All right, guys, we are out here on my home lake, Lake Gunnersville, and we only have a couple hours to fish, so we're gonna see if we can teach you a little bit about punching and catch a couple fish on a big punch rod with the couple hours we have. This has been a good area for the last week, week and a half. We're gonna see if we can get bit on the big stick. Beautiful map. Lots of hydrilla, lots of bait around, just lots of life. That's a good thing. You hear the popping of the bluegill, you see the bait scattering even as we're coming in here. So all that is good, but the number one ingredient, hydrilla. You can see it all right through here. It looks like eelgrass blowing in on top. Like when you look at it from the distance, it kind of looks like eelgrass because a lot of this is actually blown in eelgrass, but underneath is the important stuff and that's what we're targeting. Chunky, chunky, chunky. Three pounder on the max scent. That's fat. I mean, he feels like a northern fish. He's so fat. That was cool, guys. Little max scent right here. So thick, we had to go up to an ounce and three quarter. Pull a bit of grass off there. Thick, thick. All right, I wanna show you guys my punching setup when I'm out here flipping. This is an ounce and three quarter weight. So super heavy. We have a seven foot 11 extra heavy. That's a Fantasista X. 50 pound braid, uh, that's Berkeley X5 and a Revo rocket. That is all you need to get out here and punch some bass on Lake Gunnersville. So these are pretty much perfect conditions for punching guys. It's flat, calm, sunny cleaner water, so it's got to push. They want to get up under this stuff for sure. And the depth we're fishing today, there's really, there's about five, six, seven feet of water under, under these mats. Now the fish aren't all the way at the bottom. That's why you see me hopping my rod up a bunch. They're, I would guess, if I was to guess, they're right under the mat. And when I pitch a bait in there, they're nosing up on it and then they'll follow it down. Or they might be, you know, a couple feet up under the mat, but they are not I would not say that they are down on the bottom. And that's why it's important to hop your bait like you've seen me doing, bringing it back up to the top of the mat because you don't want to just sit there and shake it or work it on the bottom when you're flipping mats like this. I mean, now if it was only two feet of water, that's one thing, but we have five, six, seven feet under this mat through here. And so you definitely don't want that thing just hanging out that deep. You want to bring it back up more towards the bottom of the mat where those fish are going to be. So keep that in mind next time you're out punching, punching some grass and how deep it is. And then always just look for these little ir irregularities where these fish have actually been coming is like a, it's almost like I would call a secondary line. Like there's some loose blown up stuff out here on the edge. And then there's a really hard line right through there. And that hard line has been where all the fish have been. So I feel like most people would come down here and they're just gonna pitch all this outside edge stuff with a normal weight, one ounce, or like maybe a three quarter, or maybe an ounce and a quarter. But that's why I went up to that ounce and three quarter, is so we could get back into that hard edge and try and reach some of those fish that everybody else would pass up, you know, or pass right by. on there the whole time. It's not a bad one either. I'm pretty sure he was on there the whole time. He was running at me under the mat. It's not a bad one right there, guys. Another one punching the old creature hog. I know how to do more than just throw a spinning rod. How about that? It's a nice one. See you later, dude. It's a nice four pounder. Good fish. That was cool. I'll take that. I feel like I need a 10 second breather now. It's gotta be more. I mean, dude, it's beautiful looking. 
We're just going down this hard edge line right here, guys. You can see where, well, I can show you up in there is where I've been catching them on a frog. And it's been getting a lot of pressure lately from me and other people. And so I just backed out here to this closest hard edge. It's a bunch of eelgrass blown in here on top of this hydrilla. But when you look down here, you can see the hard edge I'm talking about. And this stuff is thick, like super thick, just outside the current. It's probably been pushed in here with all the rain the last several weeks up in Tennessee and all that. All that current we had probably pushed a bunch of stuff in here. Got it super thick, but ounce and three quarter weight, you can get through it. And you can catch some nice ones still. It is fun, I'm not gonna lie. Like it's, it's a lot of fun. October in Alabama, Gunnersville specifically, it's a good time, frogging and flipping. Normally too, you can just like stop. When you catch one, that one just came right there. You see where he came from. Normally you can just stop and flip all around the boat. You got a pretty good chance of catching another one. Man, with all the pressure and stuff, this is something you always got to think about, right? With all the pressure, it's, there's a lot of boats. I don't know if you guys can see. I mean, it looks like there's a tournament going on right now. It's a Friday, by the way. But with all the pressure, these fish are not feeling comfortable to come up on a frog in that stuff right now. There's just been too many trolling motors over their heads. That's telling me is put the frog down and then back out to the thickest stuff. So basically what I try to do is, I mean, we're not in any secret place here. Uh, this is pretty much community area. But what I tried to do was find the thickest grass that guys are going to be almost like afraid of to fish or they're not going to fish through there slow enough and, or they're not going to have an ounce and three quarter weight because that's what we're punching. So. I tried to back off just a little bit instead of running and trying to find new fish. We don't have that much time today. I could have tried to do that, but I mean, who knows if you're gonna catch them or not, right? It takes time to find fish out here on Gunnersville. So my thing is once I find those fish, I know I'm in an area that's got them. If they change and adjust from what they were doing, like I, how I had been catching them the past couple weeks on a frog, they're still in the area. They're not just gone completely. So we just made some adjustments on how we're fishing this area changed up location a little bit, but not far. And uh, it's paying off, man. We've got a couple nice ones punching already. I'm sure, I mean, you see what, what else we have left to fish down through here. I'm sure we'll catch another one. Hey, if you guys want the best locks out there on the market, check out Bolt Locks. It remembers your truck key the very first time you use it. So you only need one key for all your locks. I use them on my locker bar, my trailer hitch, and the trailer tongue, and even my spare tire. I'm gonna show you guys how I rig my punching setup. So first thing I'm gonna do is take a knife. I've had this knife, I know it's dull, I know it's rusty, but I've had that knife for like 13 years. And it's the best way to cut a snail knot off of the hook. So what we're gonna do is take our braided line right here, and this is 50 pound braid, and I'm gonna get a couple bobber stops right here. The heavy, once I get over like an ounce and a quarter, I like using two bobber stops. So we're gonna get one right here. Pull that up. And we'll snag another one real quick. Right there. So now we got two. What that does with this big heavy weight is it really holds it in position a lot better than just one bobber stop. It actually makes a big difference. So we'll put those back. We're going to take our four-aught straight shank hook, as you can see right there. When I snell knot, I just go through the eye. Let's go through the eye right there. And then I pinch it at the shank. And then just wrap back up six times. So three, four, five, six and if i can fit a seventh one in there i'll get it why not and then all you got to do is go through that bottom loop right there okay pull it tight there's your snail knot now one thing with braid that you always want to make sure you do don't ever cut it like super close to the tag you want to cut it and leave some space there so you can see how much of a tag i leave braid will slip um, so you just, you just always want to make sure that 
you leave it enough that you can allow it to slip. Now that's what it's gonna look like with the two bobber stops. And you see how that hook points up? I believe in that. A lot of guys don't believe in that. I do believe in that. You'll notice when I set the hook on the fish in this video that I don't set the hook as hard as I possibly can. I set the hook just really leaning into them instead of a big pop or a big snap or a slack line hook set like some guys say. I just reel into them really hard. I lean that rod into them as hard as I can. And when you do that, that hook point, it turns up. I mean, and I'm convinced that that definitely is gonna help you put a better hook in those fish. My favorite punch and bait is this guy right here. This is a Maxent Creature Hog. And the real reason that I like it, uh, of course, there's a lot of shapes out there that are whatever you wanna call them, creature style shapes, okay? It's nothing crazy there. I do love the ribs. I think the ribs make a difference displacing water. But the big thing is that it's max scent and they just hold on to it for so freaking long. Like they don't let go of it once they eat it. So that's the main reason I like it because when you're talking about an ounce and three quarter weight right there, that's super heavy. And there's no way to me that it feels natural to a fish with that big weight in their mouth, you know? And that's why you, a lot of times if you're punching, you'll miss, you'll miss fish. And I feel like with max scent, I have a few extra seconds that people don't get if they're not using scent on their bait. Now that we got the bait set up right there, you can see our two bobber stops, big heavy weight, max scent creature hog, all that scent coming off of it. Probably the most important thing when you're punching besides the weight is your rod. Uh, this is a 711 extra heavy rod. So gives me a ton of power in this really thick grass to be able to get them out. I'm telling you without a doubt, 100%. Huge difference between a 7.6 heavy and a 7.11 extra heavy. Big, big difference. Uh, you're gonna be able to get this hook through the fish's mouth on this rod, leaning into them, and not having to set the hook super hard where you actually pop it out of their mouth. To me, that's the biggest difference, is just the power of this rod and being able to penetrate that hook in their mouth without having to set you know, super hard, because you're gonna miss so many fish when you do that. The other thing, and if you talk to some serious punchers, I know some guys down in Florida, they love, and I love, the Revo Rocket. This is a 10 to one gear ratio reel. It picks up 45 inches of line per turn. If you watch me flip down through this mat, or anytime I'm flipping, you can see just how fast I can reel and get the bait right back in my hand, or get that momentum coming where I can pendulum it and just you know make another little pitch back out there. So. Uh, the rocket to me is also very important but number one most important thing got to be the weight you got to get through number two to me is going to be the rod uh, the 7-eleven extra heavy very very important then of course braid also important but then reel and hook and everything else um, but braid braid weight and rod top three things when you're punching for sure and i like to keep everything I'll show you my little box here this is my terminal box so I just have it easily marked where I can grab a weight. I know if I want an ounce and a quarter, it's right there, ounce and a half. I'm out of ounce and three quarters. So I got my last one tied on, so I need to get some more of those. Thankfully, you don't go through too many of these. You don't really lose them. I think an ounce and three quarter weight is probably like 15 bucks now, which is ridiculous. But gotta have tungsten, gotta have tungsten. So that is my setup, guys. Well, we only had a couple hours to come out here and fish and talk to you guys about punching. So not a bad couple hours, you know, a bite an hour, that's not terrible. And the quality was there. I'm sure if I had more time and we could practice a little bit more, we'd find some more fish. Uh, but just remember, think about, you know, getting in an area when you're around a mat like this or around a bunch of grass, find the areas where, you know, you hear activity, you're either seeing fish blowing up or you're hearing the bluegill telling you there's signs of life in that area and then pick it apart and look and think about what the average guys coming down here doing right pitching the edge fishing the edge some guys are just too scared to pitch their bait up in there a little bit further you know so a lot of people probably don't even own an ounce and three quarter weight so keep that in mind you're going to be able to target you know some little stretches and little things uh, that other guys are going to miss and you're going to be able to catch some fish doing it so we appreciate you guys tuning in as always. Thank you. I know I don't post on YouTube all the time, but we appreciate you watching. And uh, when I do have time, I have fun getting out here and making videos for you guys. So we will see you next time. Thanks again.